I'm Luke Searville. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Today, we're going to talk about equipment insurance. And to help us out, uh, I talked to Luke Jelino of United Agencies Insurance in Burbank, California. So for starters, uh, why do we need motion picture equipment insurance? Yeah, I get that question a lot. Uh, people ask me all the, all the time, you know, I, I have a personal policy, I have a homeowner's policy, whatever. Can I cover my stuff under that? That's really a question uh, for your homeowner's insurance company, but typically they exclude any property that is used in connection with a business. If you are trying to insure this equipment because you're using it for your business, that's usually a big red flag for them and they usually say no. Uh, or even if they do sometimes extend to business insurance, they are not comfortable with the entertainment industry or they aren't comfortable with you renting out your stuff to others. Lots of times they don't understand that. They don't, they don't get that, you know, wait, sorry, this is this, this your stuff or not? Are you using it for your own things or, or, or not? What's the deal here? I don't, I don't want some other company that I don't know coming in and putting their insurance into it. That just kind of scares them off a bit. So uh, it's best to go to a specialized insurance carrier that knows exactly what a rental house policy is and how the whole system works. And they actually give you a policy that is actually uh, tailor-made for you and gives you a big discount on the premium because they understand it's only secondary coverage and you aren't the primary insured on that policy. Okay, so there's this sort of odd thing where you get insurance and then a producer has insurance and then the producer's insurance, how does it play with yours? Well, let's ask about primary and secondary. If I'm being hired by somebody, their coverage is primary because they're my boss. They're, they're hiring me and taking my gear and covering that too. And if my stuff gets damaged on their set, on their production, and they're the ones paying me, if you go under their insurance, your coverage is secondary, and that means that if their insurance, for whatever reason, does not cover you, does not cover your property, uh, or if they don't have enough coverage and the claim is so large that their coverage is not enough for that claim, it'll go to your policy. Your policy is meant to be secondary. It only kicks in if something is wrong with their insurance. Uh, it, it would also work if you are in between jobs and your stuff is just sitting at your warehouse or at your location, at your home, and it gets stolen or damaged or whatever, uh, it would be covered then also. It's not actually on the set, but it's in between jobs and something happens to it. So they, they realize that might happen also. So you do have coverage in that instance as well. Okay, cool. So what if um, that's all great, but what if I you know, forget to ask for insurance or uh, you know, for whatever reason, I didn't get a certificate and you know all that kind of stuff from the producer. Uh, what happens? If you forgot to ask for coverage or maybe the person that you're working with doesn't have coverage, doesn't want to extend their coverage to you and you still want to go ahead with that job, you definitely can do that. There is a possibility your insurance company will still cover you. That is not what your policy is made for. However, it's obviously made for you to be secondary on all jobs, no matter what. So if that does happen, they'd most likely cover it, but they would either not renew your insurance at all because they don't want to work with you if you're doing that, or they might jack up your insurance rates quite a bit at renewal because they want to discourage you from having those kinds of insurance claims. Okay, so it's important to have insurance in place. No question. Uh, do I just need a certificate of insurance? Is that enough? Whenever you have a rental to somebody else, you need two things. One of them is a certificate of insurance, which I'm sure everybody is mostly familiar with. And the second one is a signed rental contract. So whoever rents from you needs to take, take your contract and sign it. And that contract states that they are going to be the ones to actually pay you if there is a claim. The COI or certificate of insurance doesn't actually say that it, it might it might they might write on there and say uh, we will cover you you are additional insured you are lost payee but at, at the top of every single certificate that's issued in this country it does say that this this certificate this document confers no rights to the holder at all so right there it's kind of saying you know you need to get an actual legal contract in place with this document and they both kind of come together and uh, they work to, 
together to confirm to your insurance company that yes, I am insured under their policy. And um, in the event of a, of a claim, that's the first thing a adjuster is going to ask for. Can I see your rental contract and your certificate? Okay, now from time to time, uh, I get asked to produce a certificate of insurance uh, from my end. And I'm kind of like, wait, isn't that the wrong way around? Isn't the producer supposed to send me a cert? Well, they are, but sometimes uh, there's a reason that you're asked for a certificate of insurance. Usually when a client or a location or somebody asks to see a rental house's certificate, they're doing that because they want to be covered in case you do something wrong. If you bring your equipment onto the set and if you, by your own negligence, injure somebody or damage something, they, they wanna make sure that you have your own insurance that will cover that. Uh, typically, even if you did something wrong, it could still go under their insurance. You are a employee of theirs at that time. Your claims should still go under their insurance but they typically ask to see proof of coverage just to make sure that if something does happen, I want to make sure you have proper insurance and that I'm not going to be having to go after you personally to get paid back for this. So um, it also just helps, I think, to help solidify your, your legitimacy as a company. I mean, if you're just a guy with some gear and you don't have any insurance at all, doesn't really quite make you look as appealing as a company that has full coverage for liability and equipment and everything else. So I think it really helps to uh, prove that you are a legit business if you have a certificate that you can give it to them. Okay, so we've established we need insurance. We need a particular type of insurance. Uh, what is it that, uh, what are the different areas that I need to have covered? If you're looking to insure a truck and some equipment and you know a, a basic package for a, uh, a, a gaffer or a, a rental house, you need to get coverage first and foremost for general liability. This is what everybody's going to ask you for. It's a request from every vendor, every client, every, every location. And uh, that's going to be number one. Uh, you're also going to need to cover your vehicle if you have one. Obviously, it's the, it's the law to have liability coverage on any vehicle that drives on the roads. Even if the studio is covering your vehicle under their insurance, it needs to be a legally drivable vehicle, so you have to have proper insurance for that vehicle before it's able to go on the, on the roads. And finally, you need to make sure that your equipment is properly covered. You need to add up how much coverage you want for your own equipment, how much coverage you might want for rented equipment that you might sub-rent from, from others, and we add that all up and we, uh, we get your package covered that way. Some places will require that you provide a list of your equipment to them before they can get you insurance coverage. This will cover you for a, on a, on a scheduled policy and they'll ask for that because they want to have an idea of what they're covering. So if that does happen, it's pretty simple. Just you need the make and model and value of each item. We don't need the serial numbers. We don't need that much detail, you know, when you bought it, all that stuff. It's helpful to keep receipts and that kind of information if you do have it, but it's not required. Uh, once you get that list to the, to the insurance company, we'll have a better idea of what kind of, you know, insurance you're, you're trying to purchase here. And, uh, Nine times out of 10, when we ask for a, a list, it comes back much higher than the client was estimating. So it definitely helps you, I think, in actually coming up with a better idea of how much gear you actually own. Once people have the time to come and put this all together, they often find that they were underestimating how much, insur how much uh, insurance they actually needed. Okay, so just so we know, let's ask what's the difference between regular equipment insurance and the producer's package, the producer's insurance. A producer's package will typically have a lot of different other types of insurance on there, uh, which are used for all different aspects of the production uh, business. So not only does it cover you to rent equipment from a, from a rental house, it'll, it'll cover you to rent uh, props or sets or wardrobes from any of those rental places. It'll cover damage done to your location. It will cover uh, damage done to your film, even if you shoot on digital, it'll cover you to reshoot if you were to lose any of your uh, film. 
covers you for office contents, uh, extra expense. There's, there's quite a few other, other things that usually apply to a producer's package, which a rental house policy will have no need of. They aren't the ones actually filming with the insurance. They're just covering their own gear and, and that's it. Okay, so let's say something happens on the set and a claim needs to be made. What happens next? What are the steps? Whenever there is an insurance claim uh, on the set or wherever else, you should immediately inform your insurance broker. That would be me. And you just give me a call and say, hey, this, this happened on this date. This is, this, this is how it happened. And um, we, we would usually inform your insurance company right away. If you had rented your equipment out to a production company and they damaged it or it was damaged on their set, their insurance should cover it. So usually their insurance would kick in right away and you would be reimbursed for your damages. If that's not happening or if they're being too slow about it, uh, at that time we can file a insurance claim with our insurance company. Uh, that does not mean that you are, you're admitting faults or, or that your insurance company will, you know, hurt your, this will hurt your, your rates at all. It's just informing them of the situation getting them to come in and help you with this dispute and get, get, make sure that you get yourself paid back. Okay, so let's say a producer doesn't have insurance and um, you still wanna work for them, you know, it's a good project, whatever it is, maybe it's a weekend deal. Um, what, 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 what should I tell them? So if anybody comes to you and wants to rent your equipment and they don't have insurance, uh, you definitely need to tell them that they need to get a insurance policy and it's actually pretty simple. We offer short-term insurance policies that we can offer to anybody uh, that covers them for a one to 60 day shoot. And if they just want to rent your stuff for a weekend, that's fine. We have rates that are made just for that. So there's, there's no reason for you to have to rent to anybody who's uninsured ever. There's, there's always fast and, uh, and cheap insurance options out there for anybody who's renting from you. Uh, to cover you for $100,000 of rented equipment, as well as a million dollars of liability, uh, that for up to, up to 12 days costs between seven and maybe $800 to $900, depending on what state you're from and a few other, other factors might, might change the price a bit, but uh, the highest it gets is 923 for that package. That's our, that's our basic package. And, um, you know, to, for under $1,000, they get a hundred grand worth of coverage for gear and a million for liability. Really isn't too bad and it's definitely worth the peace of mind as opposed to renting to somebody who doesn't have any insurance at all. Okay, so this is a situation that comes up. Uh, you know, someone uh, gets a client, has a project, wants you to work on it, uh, says, you know, hey, I want to use you, your gear, and, uh, but I don't have insurance. So a friend of mine does, and uh, he'll send you the cert, and then I'll pay you. So um, you wonder, hey, is that cool? So if a producer comes to you and tries to rent your equipment, and he says, I'm gonna use my friend's insurance policy, that doesn't work because his friend's insurance policy is only meant to cover his friend. If the name on the cert does not match the name of the producer who wants to rent from you, that's not going to work. So the certificate that you get from the producer has to have that producer's name or that producer's company on it because, because those names have to match. If he's renting from you, his name should be on the, on the cert and that's the, that's the only real legal legit way to do that. The reason that we require that everybody have their own policy is because if you're my client and you're trying to rent to somebody else, I wanna make sure that you have the proper insurance that's being given to you. And if it's somebody else's policy and your, and then your producer is saying, oh, it's my buddy's policy, don't worry, he's a, he's a good guy, he'll, he'll handle it. I don't trust, it's not a matter of not trusting your friend, I don't trust his insurance company to cover you in the event of that claim. They're going to look out for the producer's friend and for his interests, and they're going to say, I don't know this producer. I didn't agree to insure him. I agreed to insure his friend. His friend is the one who paid us, and he's the one that we're giving the insurance to. So your, the producer would have to get a short-term insurance policy with his name on it, with his company's name on it, that would allow him to rent from you. 
Okay, so maybe you've heard of people getting audited, uh, not for taxes, but for their insurance. What is an insurance audit? What does that entail? If you are a equipment rental house and you get an audit from the insurance company, they typically audit you over two different numbers. The first one and most common one for a rental house or a, or a gaffer would be your sales. They wanna know what your gross sales are. That, that's what helps them determine how big of a company you are. If you're making $100,000 in a year, they kind of have an idea of how busy you are or how big your jobs might be. If you're making a million dollars a year, they might think, oh, he's actually you know, pretty big and we, can, we should charge him a bit more for that because he clearly has a higher risk if he's making that much, that much more money and he's out there that much more. So that's one kind of audit you will, uh, you will get called a general liability audit. And that's the number that they'll ask for is your sales. The other one, which is a bit less common with rental houses is a workers comp audit. If you have any employees, even if they're 1099s uh, or any independent contractors, um, the insurance company will audit you at the end of the year, basically every single year, and they will ask you, how much did you actually spend on your employees in this last year? If the amount is more than what you had originally estimated with them, then they'll charge you more at that time. If it's less, then they might give you some money back. So those are the two numbers you have to keep track of as a rental house would be your annual sales and your annual pay, your annual payroll. So here's a little bit uh, about insurance fraud. Apparently uh, it happens, so uh, it's good to know about. So this has become a big issue recently uh, with the entertainment industry where people will get a, a insurance policy that allows them to rent from you. They'll come to you with this cert, everything looks fine. They sign your forms, they have an ID and everything. They rent maybe a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars worth of your gear, and then they just go away. They go to Mexico, they go to wherever else, and they leave the country with your equipment. And your insurance policy as a rental house typically does not cover that. Uh, that is called illegal conversion, or sometimes it's called voluntary parting, and it is referred to as a type of fraud. It is not theft because. They didn't come to you with a gun and take your stuff from you. They didn't break in and take your stuff in the middle of the night. You voluntarily gave them your property and they just didn't come back with it ever. So you definitely need to make sure that you mention to your insurance agent that you want coverage for illegal conversion. Um, if you usually rent to studios, if you're working you know, with these giant companies, it's obviously not as big of a concern there. You, you know, Warner Brothers is not gonna run away with your equipment. Uh, this is more of a, of, a, of a concern for individuals coming to you who just want to rent your stuff for the weekend. And so there are definitely some signs to, to look out for. Usually you would hopefully have a sense of, you know, of if they seem like they know what they're talking about or not, but uh, definitely make sure you, you mention to your agent that you want to be covered for illegal conversion or voluntary parting. What about specialty equipment? Uh, something that a lot of people are getting into are drones. Uh, is that something you can insure? We are constantly trying to figure out how to insure drones and the insurance companies are constantly trying to figure out how to, how to nail these down, how to classify them. Are they, are they aircraft? Are they not? Are they, are they just you know toys? It's been kind of tough for us to uh, figure that out, but uh, we definitely have some great insurance options at this time if you plan to purchase a drone to rent from others, or if you plan to purchase a drone to use for yourself. Uh, definitely make sure to mention to your agents if you have a drone, do not assume it is covered by your standard rental house policy. Don't just throw it onto your list and hope that it's going to be, you know, uh, on your policy because there is usually exclusions on every insurance policy for aircraft, which is what drones still technically fall, fall into. Okay. This was just a little brief introduction to insurance. Uh, what if you have more questions? If you're looking for more information, you can check out our blog at insuredproduction.com. Where on that blog, I've discussed these topics like voluntary parting or drones or what you should look for on a cert. So definitely check those out. And if you want to call me, I love answering questions. You can go ahead and give us a call and we can answer any questions you might have. For me, the biggest takeaway is to get that rental agreement signed. The COI is not enough. You got to do both. 
I've been a little lax about that over the years. So you know what? It's never too late to learn. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.